Well, hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new and if you're not, welcome back. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am a homeschooling mom to four kids currently aged between nine and almost four. Um, and we are expecting our fifth baby. If you couldn't tell from the title of this video, I am today 20 weeks pregnant. Um, oh, before I forget though, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I will put my handle either over here or over here. I can't remember which side it's going to go on. Um, so you can follow me over there. Um, I post more regularly over there at the moment than I do here on YouTube. So if you want to see a little bit more day-to-day -day life, it'd be good to follow me over there. I also have a link in the description box below. Um, so like I said, I'm pregnant with our fifth child. The last update video I did was at 12 weeks. I intended to do a 16 week update video, had every intention of doing it, and it just never happened. And honestly, right now it's seven o'clock on a Saturday night. We had a very relaxed day today because um, I wasn't feeling well, not just from my morning sickness that is continual, um, but also I felt like I was getting a cold last night. We had plans to go out today as a family and do something fun and that just didn't happen. So um, just kind of been getting things done around the house and resting. So the rest of my family is downstairs right now playing Minecraft together. So if you hear any yelling or anything that sounds a little odd, it's probably because of that. They are very passionate about Minecraft um, and they play it with dad. It's special, special bonding time for them. I have yet to ever play it and I don't think I ever will. So, um, so I thought I just would bite the bullet and finally get this video filmed for you that I've been intending to film for the last four weeks. And I do have good reasons why it didn't happen earlier, but lately it's just I've been putting it off because I was afraid of how long this is going to be and it is probably going to be a longer update because it's covered eight weeks of my pregnancy. And I just was like dreading sitting down to do it, honestly. Um, but I want to get it done before too much more time passes. Okay, so last last I left you, um, and if you want to stop this, if you haven't seen my other update about my 12 weeks, you might want to. I it was it. Let me tell you, I I edited that video not that long ago and posted it on my channel, and. I started crying as I was editing it because I was reliving the emotions that I was feeling from when I filmed that. Um, so it was definitely a more emotional um, update for me. So if you are interested in seeing kind of the harder parts of pregnancy that some women like myself go through, that would be a good video to go watch. I explain more about my struggles um, with being pregnant in that one. Um, so where I left you off from that one was I was hopefully going to be getting Zofran, um, the next day after a big ordeal trying to get through doctor's offices prescribing the correct medication and the correct brand and dosage and pharmacies that would actually be willing to sell it to me, um, through my insurance. I did get it the next day. I took it that day and it was later in the day when the pharmacy got it in because they have to order out for it since it's the brand name and it did not work that day so I don't remember if it was that day or another time I realized I think I need to take it as soon as possible in the morning um, and get it in my system before I start to feel nauseous because while I'm asleep at night I don't feel nauseous but once I'm awake for a good hour ish then the nausea sets in. So I do get a little bit of a break during my sleeping, but it kicks in fairly soon after I'm awake. Um, so that's what I've been doing since then. I've been trying to make sure that I get it in my system as soon as possible in the morning. Um, not too early though, because it's only going to last me for 12 hours, the one pill that I'm taking each day. So it's kind of a juggling act. And um, it has been helping. It's been helping a lot. It hasn't helped as much as I remember it helping in past pregnancies. In past pregnancies, I remember it completely taking my nausea away. Um, this has made it more manageable. 
I am able to now go grocery shopping. I can actually cook food for my family. Um, I can open the refrigerator without gagging. Um, I can do a lot of things that I was not able to do. Um, and so it's manageable, but it is still always there. Um, I, I'm like at a constant nausea level of like out of a one to 10, 10 being the worst, probably a two to three consistently throughout the day, all day long. And it can get worse, um, but it doesn't tend to last as long. And like I said, it's more manageable. I'm able to work through it and get through my day easier than I was able to before. So I've been able to be more active, but that medication along with the Bongesta that I'm taking, which is the vitamin B6 plus the antihistamine, I, it knocks me out. So I, I have to take the Bongesta two hours before I eat in the morning. So I try to do that with the Zofran when I hear my husband getting it for his day, which is somewhere between 6 and 6.30 is typically when I try to wake up to take it. And then I need to sleep for about two hours after that, um, about the amount of time before I can eat. Um, just otherwise the nausea sets in. Um, but I've also found that if I don't go back to bed for a couple of hours, I am so exhausted during the morning. Like the whole morning is shot. I just feel foggy. I just, I feel kind of drugged up from the combination of the two medicines because they both have a side effect of drowsiness. So I've definitely noticed a difference um, when I've been able to go back to sleep and when I haven't, or when I forced myself to get up because I've needed to. So I'm kind of dreading days coming up soon when I'm going to be forced to have to get up at a certain time. Um, thankfully it won't be every day, but my kids with our homeschool, they go to a public charter school one day a week. Um, so we kind of do like a combo of homeschooling and charter school and they have to be, their classes start at 8.15 in the morning and I'm normally not even awake yet um, at that time. I get up sometime between 8.30 and 9 a lot of days. Um, so to have to get everyone up and ready and out of the house for them to be at school on time, I'm not looking forward to it, I'll tell you that. Um, so we'll see how that goes coming up soon here. The first day though isn't isn't till like the second week of September, I think. So I have a little bit more time. So thankfully I have a little more time, but I'm definitely not looking forward to that. So the Zofran is helping. I don't know if the Bongesta is helping. I'm just taking it because it's a safe medication. And in case it's helping, I'm gonna continue to do it because it's a, a medicine that has to build up into your system and I'm not willing to stop it and then find out that, oh yeah, it actually was helping some and now I have to build it up again. So I'm just gonna keep taking that. Um, let's see, we saw um, the baby and if you haven't seen our gender reveal, we are having another little girl. So this will be our fourth girl. So our, we have one son and this will be our fourth girl. Um, we got to see her a couple days after that update that I filmed and they, it was the first trimester screening so they were checking more so for measurements and fluid fluid in certain parts of like the back of the neck here. They were looking for the bridge of the nose to see how it was shaped and other little markers that would tell whether or not um, the baby has Down syndrome, which we already got negatives for that and the trichromosomes 13, 18, and 23, which 23 I believe is the Down syndrome one. Anyways, we already got negatives from all that. Um, through blood work, so we weren't expecting anything to come from that, but we already had the ultrasound scheduled, and if you're gonna get to see your baby, like, yeah, you're gonna go do it. Um, so that was nice, um, but I will say, and I just told my husband this the other day, I feel very detached from this pregnancy in a lot of ways, more so than I've ever felt in any of my other pregnancies. Um, even while looking at her on the ultrasound monitor or listening to her heartbeat, like it, it still hasn't really sunk in that it's happening. And yes, I'm sick all the time. My stomach is getting larger. I am uncomfortable. There's obviously things going on with my body that show that yes, I'm pregnant, but I just don't feel an attachment or a connection yet with the baby. Um, so, 
it's just different because I don't feel like I've been this removed from a pregnancy with any of my other ones. And I, but I'm wondering too if part of that has to do with the fact that all of our other ones were planned to some degree. And so there was an anticipation um, with, you know, getting pregnant and then finding out you're pregnant and then going through the pregnancy, whereas this one was not planned in any way, very much so caught us off guard. And um, so I don't know if those are playing in with my emotions and how I'm feeling. Um, I'm not concerned about it, really. I know, I mean, one of my good friends told me who just had a, a baby in February that she, and they planned for their baby, she didn't feel really any attachment to their, their son until he was born. So hearing that made me think, okay, I'm not the only one feeling like this. And they were actually wanting, you know, expecting and wanting to get pregnant. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned about it. I feel like once she's born, it'll be all different. And who knows, I mean, I still have 20 weeks left for things to happen anyways. Um, one thing we also found out though in the ultrasound was she was pretty sure that my, where my placenta was located and it just got reconfirmed. Um, we just had another ultrasound down a few days ago. Um, I believe it's posterior. It's where your um, placenta is like close to your belly button. So on the outer part of your stomach I, or the uterus. Um, so it acts as a cushion or a pillow between your stomach or your, your tummy and the baby. So whenever the baby moves or kicks or anything like that, they're really essentially kicking this pillow. So you don't feel movements nearly as much even if they are moving a lot. And I've never had that with a pregnancy before. So it's definitely different because I'm feeling her move a lot less than any of my other babies by this point. Um, Cause with each pregnancy, I can feel them earlier and more often. Um, so I would have been feeling her a lot by now, normally, if my placenta was placed differently. And I'm really glad that I found that out at 12 weeks because I would have been more concerned at different times when I went a day or two without having felt anything. And I think I would have been freaking out a little bit more, wondering, okay, did something happen? Because I'm not feeling her. But I had a slight reassurance because while well, my placenta is there, it's probably just masking the movements. And the ultrasound we just had a few days ago um, definitely confirmed that because she moved around so much during that hour long ultrasound. Like the technician was having trouble getting the images she needed to because she was moving around so much. And I didn't feel a thing. Like I couldn't feel any of the movements and I should have um, by, the, by how big she is and everything at this point. So um, that was definitely reassuring. Um, let's see. I don't think there was anything else from the 12 week ultrasound. So then the day after that ultrasound, we did go camping for eight days. The camping was hard for me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, there were parts that were definitely better than others, even with the medication, but they were, I was exhausted a lot. Um, I was sick a lot. There were days when I just laid in the tent and didn't do anything um, other than read, I read some books and played like word games on my phone. I was very detached from the family for quite a few of the days. Um, I am glad I went though because like I said before, my youngest daughter had her birthday while we were up there and I didn't want to miss out on that. So like nighttime came around the evenings and all I could really do is get myself something to eat and then I went and laid down in the tent. And then there, like I said, there were some days where I just laid in our tent for pretty much the entire day. Very fortunately, my parents were up there with us and my mom had planned to make dinner for our family for the entire time that they were there with us. So they basically took care of my family's dinner meals the whole time, which was a huge blessing because I don't know how they would have eaten otherwise. Because if you have never gone camping with young children, it is a lot of work, and especially for one parent to do all the food, all the cleanup, all the just managing of the children and of all the things. Um, it's a lot of work. So my husband had his hands full with just the kids 
and the site and things like that. So for my mom and my dad to help out so much with the food was was great because, like I said, I don't know how it would have happened otherwise. Um, so we got through that. Then the following two weeks right after that, my kids had swim lessons every day. And basically, I managed to get us up and out the door, somewhat fed, do their swim lessons. They cleaned up at the pool facilities. We came home, had some lunch, and I was done for the day. Like that amount exhausted me a lot. <laughs> so um, we didn't do much other than that. Between again, feeling sick and exhausted. That's pretty much what those two weeks looked like. Then the week after that, my, my kids went to um, camp grandma, grandpa and Nana's house. So they spent a week with my parents um, and they got to do tons of fun stuff with them. My dad actually took the whole week off of work just to be able to play with the kids, which was amazing for me because I got lots of projects done around the house. And one of those projects I was hoping to get to was filming a 16 week update video because it was right along that, that time frame, as well as editing and uploading videos. But I put that at the bottom of my priority list because there were so many other projects that I have not been able to do because of being sick for so many months and just basically laying in bed all the time. So I had to prioritize other things in our life um, before I could get to it and there just wasn't enough time. So that was kind of the start of the delay for this update or what would have been a 16 week update. Um, I did have a doctor's appointment that week. That was my first time to meet with my actual obstetrician um, because before that I had been meeting with the nurse practitioner because my doctor is a very sought after, sought after doctor in the practice she works at. She's the one that I've had as my doctor for all of my pregnancies. I love her, she's just like, She's very professional, has great bedside manner, and she's just awesome. And other people obviously know that too. So it's hard to schedule in with her, which is why I've had to go with the nurse practitioner. So anyhow, I talk with her. It was no problem whatsoever to get a refill on my Zofran because I only had it enough for a one month supply. And then I needed to ask for it again. And the nurse practitioner gave me a really hard time about it because of the potential risks involved. And my husband and I knew the risks that were involved and we were okay with the risks that were involved because we knew that the benefits for me would outweigh the potential risks. Um, so even with, you know, knowing that it was still really hard to get the prescription from the nurse practitioner. Um, she seemed very stingy about it. Whereas my doctor who knew me, knew my history with my pregnancies, she asked a few questions and then she's like, oh yeah, no problem. I get the refill filled and I look on the bottom and she put on there three refills. So like without even like trying to hassle her anymore about it, she already gave me three additional refills on it. So that was amazing. I love my doctor. <laughs> um, at that doctor's appointment, we also discussed more. I had already talked about this with the nurse practitioner and I don't remember if I've said this to you guys or not, but um, we are looking at getting my tubes tied after this pregnancy. And so I talked more with her about risks and how we can go about doing it. And I may do a whole nother video on um, the reason why we're choosing to have me get my tubes tied versus my husband getting a vasectomy. Um, and like what exactly we're gonna be doing with that and why. So I think I'll do another video on that, but we talked about that there. Her baby's heartbeat, which was wonderful and strong. She said, you guys produce very healthy babies and she could tell that just from the strong heartbeat um, and my past pregnancies. So that was a good visit. Like I said, that week I got a ton of stuff done. I was exhausted by the end of it. And the following week after that, we started our homeschool year. I was planning to start it on a Wednesday. My husband found out that he only had to work a couple hours that Friday and he could work them from home. So we bumped up our schedule a little bit for homeschool and we started on a Tuesday instead. And normally, normally I had like a very light, fun first day of school day. It didn't quite work out like that and I'll probably do that in a homeschool update video. Um, not to bore you guys with it here, 
but so we started on a Tuesday we got a full day in on a Wednesday then oh but that Tuesday we started okay the night before that Monday night my son ended up waking up and throwing up for four or five hours um, so he was sick so he was kind of resting on Tuesday uh, he got better fairly quickly there's some stomach bug going around because I had to go actually pick up my kids from my parents house when they were originally planning to drop them back off at our house because my dad got a stomach bug on the Sunday that I picked them up from their house and some friends that they had been playing with during the week um, their granddaughters the ones they were playing with got sick that Saturday night with this stomach bug so we we're like oh great so Landon got it and then he was feeling better and then I woke up Thursday morning and I woke up not feeling so good and it's definitely a different type of nausea the stomach bug than the pregnancy nausea um, pregnancy nausea is like in the back of my throat stomach bug nausea is actually in my stomach so I woke up not feeling great a couple hours later I started throwing up and then my oldest daughter started throwing up that day as well thankfully she is old enough was cognizant enough to actually make it to the toilet in time so I didn't have to clean up any of her mess like I had to previously with my son. Um, it got to a point that day that I had been throwing up enough and not being able to even keep down water. I ended up going to urgent care and getting um, IV fluids to help me rehydrate so that I could start um, holding stuff down. My daughter didn't have it nearly as bad by early afternoon-ish. She was better. We were both pretty weak though after that. The following day we were, I was very weak. Um, so we just kind of rested that day. So what was supposed to be the start of our homeschool week ended up being mostly a sick week. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can see how my update has just gotten pushed back further and further and further because of things that have just come up. Um, and so we've been doing homeschool now. We got back on track with it. And then we had some family come out from out of town this last week, so we were trying to make sure we had time with them as well. So I think the only other thing I want to talk about is the ultrasound that we had a couple days ago. Um, oh no, there's one other thing I believe. Um, so we had this extensive 20 week anatomy check ultrasound. Everything looked really good with baby. Um, she, like I said, she was moving around a ton. Um, they didn't see anything to be alarmed about. She has no signs of cleft lip or cleft palate. And I'm pointing that out because one of the potential risks of taking Zofran is that you increase your chances of cleft palate. And so we knew that as far as we know in either of our families, um, we don't have a history of cleft palate uh, so it if your chances are already really small and it's just increasing the chance of it it should still remain pretty small her heart looks really good which is another potential risk of taking Zofran is heart um, defects but as far as they could tell she had the four chambers everything was pumping right blood was flowing in and out in the correct places so all of that looked really good. So hearing all of that was really nice to know that so far at least she hasn't received any complications from the medication I've been taking. So that's kind of reassuring, you know. Um, oh, I need to move my legs. They're falling asleep. Ooh. At the end of the ultrasound, we met with the perinatologist and I was scheduled to meet with her because I'm considered high risk, only because of my age. I don't have any other medical history um, to show that I need to be in the high risk category other than the fact that I'm over 35. Um, so we met with her, she said everything looks great. She would even, she's even gonna recommend to my doctor to take me out of the high risk category or at least move me to the low risk, high risk category that makes sense and then she's also recommending uh, another ultrasound at 32 weeks to um, measure for growth and I think as long as everything looks good at that one then they'll just leave it until I give birth um, but they're just doing that as a precaution which is something I've never had done before either so I think that was it that all the news that came out of that ultrasound 
Um, I think the last thing I wanted to share with you, and I may again do another video just so that, because this is kind of at the tail end and I don't know how many people are going to sit and listen to this entire update to get to this point. Um, but after my 12 week um, update video, um, a viewer uh, emailed me a link to a blog post. This is from Gloria, so thank you, Gloria. She emailed me this link for, to this lady, for this woman who, at the time, and this is back in 2013, when she wrote this, she was pregnant with their eighth child, and they now have 10. Um, and she would get severe morning sickness, like hyperemesis. And so she looked into, she decided she was going to start researching the causes of morning sickness and what could possibly cause this. And I'm going to paraphrase here, but I will put a link to the, to the article below or the blog post below so that you can check it out for yourself. Through her research, she found out that there's this certain bacteria that is pregnant in all women who have, that they tested, who have hyper, hyperemesis, and that there are there is medicine that can help combat that bacteria and kind of help balance out your gut. Um, but they don't know that it's safe during pregnancy. So then she looked into alternatives that were safe for pregnancy. One of them is collodial silver, which I had never heard of before. My friend who's a nurse said she's heard of it, but had it, didn't really know much about it. Um, and then also fermented foods and drinks can also help combat this bacteria in your gut. And the bacteria kind of gets triggered from hormone changes. So like pregnancy could trigger this bacteria and make you have all this nausea. So I thought, well, I might as well give it a try because I'm willing to try something that's natural. If it's just adding something to my diet and I can stomach it right now, I might as well try it. Excuse me, this is one of the side effects of pregnancy. I'm definitely more gassy. So, excuse me for that. Um, so I've started, and the lighting too, I hope it's okay. I know it's really dark behind me, but I have a light on me, so I hope it's not horrible for you. Um, I've started eating basically sauerkraut, and I've been drinking kombucha. So she would eat some sauerkraut before every single meal. I started that, and then I went down to two times a day. Then there was a day that I didn't have any and I'm kind of trying to get back to two times a day. I was just starting to feel burned out on it, which is why I kind of slowed it down. Um, at first it was like, oh, this is no problem, but it's like, oh, I could see how this could kind of get old fast. Um, I've been sipping a bottle of kombucha. I think it's 16 ounces. I've been buying it at Costco. Um, and I like the flavor of it. It's it's called ginger aid. That's it, so it has ginger added to it. Um, and I do believe it has been helping. It has not been helping long term by any means. I need to continually eat or sip throughout the day, but it will give me brief amounts of time, a couple hours maybe, um, hour to two hours maybe, that I don't feel the nausea in my throat. And so then I start to feel it again, so then I'll go take a few more sips and it lasts for a little while. And I try to make sure to, to eat the um, sauerkraut before the meals, especially if I know it's a meal that could potentially trigger my nausea more because it has dairy or more sugars in it or something like that. Um, so I do believe it has been helping. I don't know if it would have helped me in my first trimester. It really helped this woman that wrote the article. Um, or I should say blog post, not an article. Um, and... So it really helped her even with her first trimester getting through it and having significantly reduced morning sickness. So I'm going to keep it up for as long as I feel like it's helping me. I just thought it was really interesting. So I will definitely link it down below so you can check it out in case it's something that might be beneficial to you or to someone else that you know as well. So I knew that this was going to be a long update and I apologize for that but I did kind of warn you in the beginning um but I'm gonna wrap it up here I don't know when my next update will be if it'll be in four weeks or again in eight weeks we'll just see how it goes I might like them to be a little bit closer together but it's life right now thank you for following me on this pregnancy journey it's um 
it's fun to share it with you guys and also to get to interact with you in the comments down below and to I really appreciate the encouragement that I've received and the support it's it definitely helps um, to read such positive uplifting comments from you guys after you watched one of these videos especially that 12 week one which was really hard for me um, so I do appreciate you watching and investing in my life I really do appreciate that so thank you if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to to be able to continue following this pregnancy um, hit the red subscribe button if you like this type of video hit the like button and I will try to do a belly shot right now. I just don't know with the lighting if you'll be able to see much, especially because I'm wearing black. I will try, and if it doesn't work out right now, I will do it another day and just insert it here for you. It's not horrible, is it? Okay, so I don't know how well you can see that. I also just took a picture in my bathroom, so maybe I'll insert that here. That might be a slightly better you so and this is definitely more baby I know the last few times I've said it's not baby but this is definitely baby and placenta like I said the placenta is like all right here <laughs> so that's cushion too like I said thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye